Jairus of All Iron Man Rocket Launcher Build Part 4. This channel is called Jairus of All because it's Jairus of All Trades Master of None, and nothing shows that more than me trying to get this off after it adhered to all the hairs on my arm, even though I covered it with grease. And you see the cuts, and then those red spots are chemical burns from Nair, because I tried to get Nair into the cracks to get the hair to dissolve so that I could take it off, and it didn't work. It just ended up burning my skin. I think it was because all of the grease that I put on my arm to keep this from happening ended up coating the hairs and the Nair couldn't burn them up. Anyway, now I'm gonna cast my arm. I like to try new things, so I'm going to use this bacon grease from the bacon candle that I made the other day as the mold release agent for this, and then I'm gonna use fiberglass resin to make the actual cast of my arm. Mold, cast, cast. The reason I'm gonna use bacon grease is because my mold didn't turn out perfect, which doesn't really matter. It has holes in it and that kind of thing. So I'll have to trim it a little bit at the end, but I was thinking to minimize that, I'll use bacon grease because it's thicker and it'll fill in some of these spots. And you can actually see my hair stuck on the inside of this thing where I had to rip it off and I got cut because I had to use something to break all the hair off. I stuck it in this way and I used a butter knife and I couldn't get in that far so I took a coat hanger and I made a little loop at the end and I worked it down in and then I pulled it back out real quick to break the hairs off and I ended up getting myself with it a little bit. Anyway, point is my mold is not very good so I'm gonna use bacon grease to work out the imperfections and cast it. And I'm gonna hot glue it together and get it ready. Bacon grease. Here we go. So what I'm doing now, I believe, is called slush casting, where you roll the resin around to get a coating on the inside so that it's not just a solid block of resin, because I don't want to have to fill up a whole arm's worth of resin to get this thing made. I'm going to do multiple layers, that way it's nice and hard, but slush cast, yep. Time for the second coat. Time for layer three. I'm gonna put gloves on this time so I don't have to clean. Oh, broke. One more coat to go. I'm gonna mount this pole inside. That way I can put it in the vise and it'll hold the arm for me. Good idea, right? Last one. I already got this stuff mixed up and the tube isn't connecting with the resin as much as I thought it would. So I'm gonna use an old rag instead of fiberglass cloth because I don't have time to dig it out and cut a piece. So I'm gonna use this to anchor it in place. Well, I did that just in time. This stuff cured while I was getting the t-shirt soaked. I got lucky. Can you hear the hairs ripping? It's hairy, just like my arm. <laughs> I got my thumb out. Now comes the hard part. Yes. Whew. So close. Need a hand? <laughs> it's almost creepy, especially with the hair on it. It's weird. It smells like bacon. I said it's pretty good. Next!
now that I got my fake arm done and I have something to actually build on, it's time to start getting the pieces ready and I have to go back to this and I'm going to transfer all of these to paper to show you how I'm going to transfer it to metal because there's no point in showing you how I transfer it to metal because you probably won't be able to see it because I scribe my cut lines and then I mark with pencil my like extra things that I'm going to do. There's only really one thing, I mean anybody can copy this stuff to the other thing that you're going to cut it out from, but there's some important parts that I want to talk about. So let's start copying patterns. Yep. Cutting stuff out of metal is difficult compared to paper. You know, you can just use scissors. So I'm going to try to do this very carefully so that I only have to do it one time. These arms here, the shape of the arms doesn't have to be exactly the same, but the lo whole locations do. And then where they attach to the rocket tube, that has to be exact. That way these move and keep it level and it comes up and is still pointing to the place that it's supposed to. And obviously with pins and foam board, my holes are starting to get worn out so it's not moving like it's supposed to. Same thing for these arms. That way it moves that top panel down into position like it's supposed to. Now I'm going to cut them out. Yep. Anytime you're cutting something out of metal, usually the straightest edge is the factory edge. So if you're cutting out straight pieces like this, you want to utilize the factory edge on the metal as much as possible. So I'll basically trace the outside of everything to get the general shape. But then there's a hole right here. Let's bring you in closer. There's a hole right there. There's a hole right there. And then I have that track slot. So I've got the outline traced. But now I need to copy that pinhole. So what do you think a good way to copy that through would be? I could take a pin and stick it through the hole very carefully. And that will give me my location. Now for the other movement arm that lifts the lid, instead of copying this, I will just copy this section again. So there will be two of these and two of these but this one I'm not going to use. I'm just going to use this section. That way I'm sure that those holes are going to be exactly the same. So I'll copy that section and then instead of drilling them all separately, I'll stack up all four and drill it together. That way all the holes are in the same spot compared to each other, like the distance between them. You know what I'm saying? I decided to change it up a little bit in this video and instead of making you guys sit through and stupid amount of time of watching me just cut out metal and bend metal and drill holes. I figured I would just explain it a little bit real quick and I am stacking the pieces together and then drilling the holes all at the same time. That way they're in the same spot and then I bolt them together with the bolts that I'm going to use. That way I can finish them and make them look cool. Because what's the point of making something that's functional if it doesn't look cool? I think Tony Stark would agree and I'm gonna get all these parts ready for the next video so that you can watch me assemble it. So, uh, I decided to make the end of this video a giveaway. This is what is left of the pink rocket that I fired with the Doom rocket launcher. I am going to shoot the Doom rocket launcher again so you can see it goes straight, but I need to get this project done first. And I decided I would give this away. So what you have to do to win is you need to be able to tell me what my notification sound is from my phone. And you have to tell me where it came from originally. If you put where it originally came from in the comments and you're right, I'll say you win. You have to be the first one to do it. And if you're the first one, and I comment and I say, you won, then look in the description of the video and you'll see the email address listed there. And just email me with your address and I'll send it to you. It's pretty simple. Oh, I need to play the sound for you. Ready? Hear that? That's the sound. So my favorite name for this one that you guys posted in the comments was Projectile Dysfunction which is hilarious. So I'll put projectile dysfunction on it and then I'll sign it and I'll send it out to the first person that can name what that sound is and where it came from first. You have to email me because I'm not gonna ask you for your address, you know, 
publicly so that everybody has it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Next time I'm gonna put all this stuff together. Oh, I cut this tube to length. I just wrapped some paper around it and taped it. That way I could cut it nice and even. This is just shower curtain rod. And then I'm gonna use another piece of this to make a little blast deflector in the back so that it doesn't shoot you in the face with rocket exhaust whenever you fire it because you'll be holding it like that. Remember, subscribe if you wanna catch more of this build series. And next time it's gonna get exciting because I'm gonna use my fake arm, this thing, to go ahead and mount the actual base plate for all the movement mechanism and then I'll attach the parts to it and then I'll start building the outer structure if I can get to it. We'll see how long this takes because I gotta get the movement mechanism worked out for the servos and then figure out how to connect them to a microcontroller. This build's turning out to be pretty long. Kinda on a deadline here. Gonna try to get this finished. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Back, back, back from the dead. Oh, hi, how you doing? <laughs>